What does it mean to die to the flesh as a Christian? When we lived in the world before we came to Christ, if you are a new covenant believer, which means you believe in Christ, you believe in the finished work, you believe that Christ died and resurrected and you are righteous through him, you are no longer living under subjection to the flesh, but you are living in a place of power. That when we come to Christ Jesus, we are new creatures. All things have passed away. All things have become new. You are no longer under the old rule of your body and your sinful nature being the ruler over you and you being a slave on that earth you're now in a rule that you have dominion over your sinful flesh and that is where scripture says die to the flesh which is you now have the power to put the works of the flesh to death i have to explain this that this doesn't mean you won't have temptation this doesn't mean you will not have desires you're going to have temptations you're going to have real desires and that doesn't make you a sinner that doesn't mean oh you're supposed to die to the flesh you will not be having those desires let nobody deceive you i'm talking to someone that says i have given myself to christ and i want to know how to die to the flesh because it feels like i really want to do good but i, I feel like i'm being pulled i can't keep up you have to die to the flesh which is you don't have to satisfy your flesh each time it has a need that is the first thing you need to know because somehow as believers we are so much alive to the flesh that when we have desires maybe sexual desires i've seen videos that females says that when they are in their season like monthly cycle they feel the desire a lot and then if you are in a relationship it's going to be different like it's going to be different because now you feel like there's a legit person here that you love and you would like to get something right so it's for you to know dying to the flesh is not like i won't have these desires why am i having these desires and you try to beat yourself up no don't beat yourself up it means you have the desires it shows you are human but then you won't give in to your desires now that is the power of dying to the flesh because before the flesh had the power to control what you do but now you have the dominion to tell it nah i feel you <laughs> i get it i understand it it's natural it's legit but then it's not time we can't have this sex now you get it. it's not easy easier said than done like i said if you are outside of a relationship this becomes easier like being in a relationship myself i've realized that mm, the temptation hits different like every everything else about our sexuality hits different as singles now this applies to even married people this applies to us generally as christians that you have to die to the flesh that you don't give to your flesh what it needs per time you starve it and how do you do this keep feeding the spirit which is by being in the word of god spending your time to know god's word to know god's commandments to know god's god's love to be occupied with christ and by this you will neuter the desires of the flesh because christ said when you submit yourself to me like delight in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart it did not say he will give you what you want he says he will give you what to desire which is paul said that god works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasures which is god puts in desires in you and then gives you the power to work it out god puts in desire to live a life of sexual purity and it gives you the power to work it out god gives you desire to say okay i want to honor god in my business and be you know genuine and transparent and honest and then it gives you the capacity to work it out like whatever good desire god gives it to you this is a place of surrender and delighting becoming soft in god and aligning with god and allowing him to lead you that is a place of dying to your flesh that instead of being coming a slave to your flesh you're becoming a slave to righteousness to doing what is right before god to serving god and this is also for you to know that your righteousness is not based on works at this point knowing that you are a new covenant believer you're righteous by faith of all that christ has done the scripture says here in romans chapter 6 verse 9 knowing that christ having been raised from the dead dies no more death no longer has dominion over him for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. This is an encouragement for you 
that the truth of the scripture is as Christ died to sin once and for all time, you see yourself dead to sin. Indeed, that these desires that I have are not going to overpower me. Whatever it is, whatever kind of desire it is that you used to have in your old nature, you are now a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. It's a place of realizing where you are right now and where you used to be. I'm no longer where I used to be. So there were things that I used to desire and just give into it before. Before Christ, BC. But now, there are these things, I have these desires. But I'm not going to give into these desires. Why? Because I am living a new life. I have torn a new leaf. I have a Savior who loves me. I'm not just trying to impress him. I know he loves me and I love him back. So, and loving him is not by mouth. It is to keep his commandments and I want to serve him. I want to keep his commandments. Dying to the flesh. So now let me give you these three points that I feel like will help you. Instead of self-occupation, be occupied with Christ, which is study your Bible, spend time in worship, spend time playing anointed music, spend time listening to the word of God that's going to build your soul and build your capacity and help you focus in life to go after your destiny. Instead of self-righteousness, receive the righteousness of God. Secondly, don't try to say, my efforts, I have to do things to be right. You can never be right with God. You can never be justified by your works or by the works of the law. Oh, I've not committed adultery. I've kept the law. That won't make you righteous. That doesn't give you eternal life. You can't even keep all the law. If you break one, you break all. So can you keep the law? No, you can't. That's why nobody could keep from David and all the people that the patriarchs that we, we talk about. None of them was able to keep the law. And it's only Christ that came to fulfill the law because he kept it all and then he fulfilled it. Then he has ushered us into a new way of living that sin is now not having dominion over us because we are under grace, not under the law. Thirdly, instead of sin consciousness, become Christ conscious, become righteousness conscious, become holiness conscious. You are in a position that Christ has placed you. He that knew no sin was made to become sin, that you and us all who were sinners should be made the righteousness of God in Christ. That's Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It's for you to know, instead of me being sin conscious, oh, did I fail today? Did I do right today? Instead of being in that place of trying to check yourself, check yourself, focus on Christ. Focus on the fact that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Even when you feel like you failed, dying to the flesh is not like, oh, why did you do this? I'm beating yourself over sin. It is a place of saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Recon that as Christ died to sin once and for all, you are dead to sin indeed and alive to God. Being alive to God is to know what where God has placed you is a place of righteousness. It's a position of righteousness. So you are not in a place of begging God to make you righteous. You are in a place that he has made you righteous and you will receive it. The most blessed thing you would do is to receive what he has provided. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Doing what? Looking unto Jesus, fixing our eyes on Jesus, allowing Jesus to take our whole focus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So you have to come to this place. I'm looking to Jesus. I'm Christ conscious. My righteousness is from him. That is all you need to do to be dead to self. Does it mean you won't feel honey? <laughs> nah. Does it mean you won't have some kind of feelings that are not like good, in a good category? Doesn't mean that. But it means you don't give in to the feelings you have. It means you don't give in to your flesh. Whenever your flesh demands, you are receiving supplies from God. Not to satisfy the demands of the flesh. That is where self-control is a fruit of the spirit. So that you can now control self. You are now not allowing self to have dominion and control you. 
That is where self-control applies to you dying to self. That it is a fruit of the Spirit. As you are focusing on the Holy Spirit and on God, He gives you the power to control self. Tell self no. Be disciplined in every area. So this is not like a magic die to self and you're like going to pray. Oh God, I want to die to self. No, no, no. It's a real life walk. A daily basis walk. And I hope that this video is going to be a blessing and it's a blessing already to you. Thank you for watching. I am OM. Do well to hit that subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed to this channel. Don't just watch and leave. Your best way of supporting what I'm doing here is to subscribe like and share the video and i would like you to help me do that thank you so much for supporting and i pray that god bless you and give you the grace and the discipline to work with him because god did not give you the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind and you'll be able to live and honor god with your body with your spirit and your soul in jesus name amen see you in my next video Bye bye